The U.S. and NATO troop withdrawal from Afghanistan is sure to leave a power vacuum in the country, leaving space for the China-Pakistan nexus to wield tremendous clout in the war-torn nation due to the ISI's links with the Taliban. Now, Lauren Sellen, a retired U.S. Army colonel, has written a paper which uh, is exposing Pakistan's role in defeating the U.S. objectives in Afghanistan. He says, and I quote, Pakistan's duplicity has continued for over 17 years. While accepting billions of American dollars in military and economic aid, Pakistan has been slowly bleeding the U.S. to death in Afghanistan through its support of the Taliban, Haqqani Network, and other terrorist groups, unquote. Now, Selen goes on to explain the reasons behind Pakistan's dual policy in Afghanistan. Selen says it is Pakistan's role to force the U.S. and NATO out of Afghanistan to pave the way for the regional dominance of its closest ally, China, unquote. Now, the question arises, how can the U.S. counter China's growing influence in Afghanistan and stop Beijing's near total domination of South Asia once the U.S. and NATO troops leave the war-torn nation? So in this, what he believes are the options that are in front of the U.S. administration. Firstly, he says the U.S. should make Balochistan and the Arabian Sea region its area of focus. He adds that the efforts by Washington to strengthen military and diplomatic ties with India are steps in the right direction. Selen highlights how the U.S. should adopt a traditional containment policy to counter China, which includes diplomacy and augmented naval and air power projection. He adds that the U.S. must disrupt China's efforts to dominate the region by managing and, when necessary, exploiting the inherent conflicts in the region. Now, Lawrence Selin also urges the U.S. administration to shift its focus towards Balochistan province in Pakistan, which has been traditionally secular and tolerant. He warns Washington to keep an eye on the Chinese naval projects in Balochistan, which could eventually encircle U.S. bases in West Asia. Now, for more on this, we are being joined by Lauren Sellen, retired U.S. Army colonel, live from Montana in the U.S. Thanks for being with us on this broadcast. Thank you. Now, in... Uh, 2019, you authored a paper called China, the Post-Afghanistan-U.S. Adversary in South Asia. Now in 2021, with the U.S. and the NATO withdrawal nearly complete, what do you think the U.S. can do to counter the Chinese aggression, especially in the face of an emboldened Taliban? Well, the, uh, uh, the influence of the United States in Afghanistan has always, always been predicated on, a, on its presence in Afghanistan. So as it withdraws from Afghanistan, its influence uh, will lessen significantly and then leave a power vacuum, which China hopes to fill because China has always wanted to dominate South Asia economically and, and militarily. Uh, so I think the important thing to do now is that uh, the United States has to work very closely with, with India on, in shaping a policy that will uh, prevent China from uh, dominating South South Asia. And uh, you mentioned a number of things, but I think in particular, I'll reiterate them, that we need to have a containment policy against China as we did against the Soviet Union during the Cold War. And we need to leverage uh, the uh, ethnic uh, fault lines within Pakistan, because Pakistan is actually the weak link in the China-Pakistan nexus. So we can do things like su supporting uh, the Pashtun uh, self-determination, but in particular, uh, a significant blow against uh, Pakistan and China and their plans would be an independent Balochistan. Mm. Right, and Ch China's aggressive policies with respect to uh, Taiwan and Hong Kong have made the headlines recently. The biggest question that arises now is, is China planning to enter Afghanistan and fill that vacuum that you mentioned left by the United States and the NATO troops? Oh, absolutely. There's been negotiations going on between uh, China and, and the Taliban for a number of years now. So uh, I expect that the Taliban will control Afghanistan within six months. I also expect uh, China to bring Afghanistan into the China-Pakistan 
ec economic corridor and for China to start exploiting Afghanistan's mineral wealth. I also expect China to build military bases on the Arabian Sea, in particular at the mouth of the Persian Gulf in, the, uh, uh, in Pakistan's uh, Baluchistan province. So that's why it's so critical at this point with this power vacuum, vacuum developing that the United States and India work closely together to uh, essentially prevent China from succeeding in South Asia. All right, and what lies ahead uh, for Afghanistan with the Taliban claiming to have occupied already 85% of the country? Did the U.S. leave this war-torn nation without a proper exit plan in place? Well, if there is a plan in place, I, I, I don't know what it is, because the Biden uh, administration has not articulated a plan. And uh, as you mentioned, uh, in 2019, I wrote a paper describing what a plan should be as the United States withdraw, withdraws. But I, I don't see any effort on the part of the Biden administration to work more closely with India and to develop a strategy to prevent China from uh, economic and military domination of South Asia. And, and this is a real problem because uh, China already has a naval base uh, in Djibouti, which is at the mouth of the Red Sea at the entrance of the Suez Canal. Another Chinese base at the mouth of the Persian Gulf will give them essentially control of the northern Arabian Sea and all the vital sea lanes. And it's a threat not only to uh, India, but also to the world in terms of uh, choke points uh, that China will control. We'll leave it there. Thank you very much for being with us on this broadcast, Colonel Lawrence Sinan. We are now available in your country. Download the app now. Get all the news on the move.